us. My aspect on that situation is that I think that there are multiple or parallel universes, many of them, and ours being the one that is actually run by 1.618. And I think that we're part of the nervous system of the universe. We just simply don't know it. I think science is going to get us to a place where we really do truly become enlightened. Um, I think that Buddha was one of those people. Jesus Christ, obviously, yes. You know, there's been some extremely enlightened people as we've gone through time. But it's only with science now that I think that we're truly going to be able to understand what our true enlightenment is and our, and our actual place in this universe. I mean, I'm writing a kid's book at the moment with my beautiful niece down the back. And it's just my idea, but when the universe stops expanding, does anybody know what entropy is? Entropy. Entropy, entropy means no light, no heat. Our sun is powered by the exchange of hydrogen and helium. They will burn out about 5 billion years. Eventually, all of the stars in the galaxies of the universe will burn out. And they are moving away at, at the moment faster than the speed of light. So when you reach entropy, what happens then? What was the purpose of this situation in the first place? We're all just in heaven in a black spot, sort of looking down on nothing that's there in the first place. You know, it's, it's up to us as, as a species now, as an intelligent species, that I think that there are, I mean, 150 billion galaxies. I mean, are we kidding ourselves? That there's probably not one intelligent species in each one of those galaxies? And is Jesus or Buddha there right now, preaching on the mountain? I doubt it. I doubt it very much. They may, I mean, has anybody seen the movie Avatar? Yeah. Did you get it? Yeah. It's like, it's about us and what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. And those guys have realised that part and parcel, I mean, it was a great movie. It took James Cameron 15 years because they didn't have the technology. But I've been thinking about these things even before I went and saw that movie. And I thought, hang on, this is right. We're not doing this correctly. Absolutely we're not. I go into the, the different signs or the this and that. And, and as I said, the Bible base really is based on astrotheology. That's really what it's about. It goes back to the time of the Zoroastrians. And as, as I said, at the moment, we're coming into the age of Aquarius. Even in Luke 14.10, um, uh, Jesus said to the 12 disciples, you will meet a man bearing a pitcher of water when you enter the town. He will show you a house with 12 rooms. Those 12 rooms are the 12 signs of the zodiac. It's astrology. It's, there's no mythology involved in it whatsoever. And it sort of begins out that way at the end. And even, even the Quran basically is a, is a plagiarism of the Old and New Testament, if you look that far into it. I go into the, the different planets. And honestly, I don't believe in astrology myself. <laughs> I'm a bit of a non believer in a lot of things. But, I mean, reality and logic, I mean, that would be the best place that I could say that that was my belief. I mean, people sort of say, well, I believe. And I go, well, that's great, but show me the science behind it the belief. If there's no science behind it, it's simply just your belief. That's what it comes down to. And as I said, the great minds, um, Albert Einstein obviously coming up with the uh, theory of relativity. In 1935, Albert Einstein was talking to Edmund Hubble, which was the gentleman that discovered the other galaxies in the universe. And he said, that's pretty amazing, isn't it, Edmund? And he said, yes, Albert, I thought it was quite exceptional myself. And, uh, and this really upset both of these guys for a start, because they thought it was a, a static universe, that it wasn't moving, that it was stable. I mean, they had no idea in any sense that there was other galaxies out there. The whole, the whole universe was the Milky Way at that stage. 1929, Edwin Hubble said that's not the case. And Albert Einstein said to Edwin Hubble, you know, if I had discovered that, I'd have been famous. <laughs> he said, you're funny that. So. But in a sense, as we've gone through, you can see that I, I get to the stage here where I'm actually using this arch here with the various planets that have come through. Obviously, time not having no hands because it just simply doesn't exist, and now time based on that astrological proportion. The essence of the female portrays a lot in my work simply because we've got a, you know, you're looking at millions of young women that are circumcised every year, that are brutalised, that have their faces covered. Fifty percent of the identity of these people in these countries don't have a say in their own lives. What we're doing by doing that is we're losing 50% of the intelligence of our species by not giving these women and these children a say in their own destiny. That's the reason I sort of get, get in the back up a little bit about the whole religious aspect. I go, 50% of those girls have no say, and they're still circumcising these kids, which I think is an abomination personally. So I look at women in many senses as being part and parcel of the consciousness 
of the rest of our journey. I would say that if there was a God, it wouldn't be a man, because guys have screwed things up quite badly as we've gone along. If God was something, it would be a female, because it's the woman that gives birth to things and creates, not the man. And that, in any sense, is that she's the unseen woman. She's still praying that these are the bubbles of consciousness. She looks like she's pretty turbocharged there, I must admit. But these are the bubbles of consciousness that come out of this. The black hole, once again, going into the entropy of the universe. In every galaxy we've discovered now, there is a black hole. And the science of that is that there are, are there white holes in the universe where the energy goes in. The only thing that escapes from the black hole on the event horizon is negative radiation particles. That's the only thing that comes out. So is the universe or each galaxy eventually going to wind itself in? There's only 5% of the visible matter that we see in the universe. The other 95% is dark matter. But they can't find dark matter. That's dark matter right there. That's the only way that those spiral galaxies can stay the way that they are. Because if you looked at one of the Newtonian laws, as it spins, it would simply spin out, wouldn't it? So within the universe, that dark matter is holding it together. As I come through here, you can see that the woman is sort of bowing down. She's sort of bowing down to the extent that, no, we don't know everything. But there is a place for us in this universe. If we don't screw it up, we've really got to step back and have a look at what we're doing. Uh, sort of change our thought patterns. I mean, even Gandhi said that you can judge a country by the way that they treat their animals for a start. <coughs> so you have to look at those situations as well. These, are, these were great human beings. These were enlightened human beings. You know, people that really knew what was going on. <coughs> the, the basic shapes of all of this, sort of going back to the Kabbalah, all of those shapes, those shapes I've got there, make up, and as, a, as an art teacher as well, I would say to people when they were drawing, or else they not <laughs> I said, break everything down into shapes. Just four shapes. You give me those four shapes and I don't care what face it is or what you're drawing or what you're painting, you simply break it down into those four shapes and you can create everything around you, even this. <coughs> and the last section on this, as I said, the, the dodecahedron is simply part of the encased or the encapsulated soul of the male and the female. We have to break away from that and we have to be reborn again. It's the same when uh, people are baptised. They say it's reborn. That's the reason that it actually comes from Horus or Anup, Anup the baptizer. The similarities between Horus and Jesus Christ and all of those other 25 days are outrageously similar. I mean, I, I can go, go over it with you, but it's incredible how similar they actually are. We are, we are born again. Hopefully we explore the universe. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs>